This is the MacBook Air 2020. It was launched four years back at the price of around 1 lakh rupees. Currently, with all the offers going on, you can get it around 62 to 64,000 rupees, which makes it a direct competitor of most of the modern Windows laptops targeted by first time middle class buyers. So, in this video, I'm going to give you the long term review of my MacBook Air 2020, and I'm not just going to state why you should be buying this product, but also why you shouldn't be buying it. So, make sure to watch till the end because it's going to be interesting. Starting with the build quality, this has an aluminium unibody design. It's a cold to touch, solid, sturdy metal. It's not like those cheap, flimsy, fiber Windows laptop. When you physically hold and use this thing, you will understand how well and thoughtfully every little bit of it is designed. The lovely weight management while unfolding it, and even the ability to do it with one hand, and the subtle snap for that physical feedback when you close or open the laptop lid. And further, if you see the back of this laptop, there is no fan. And this is such a huge advantage and a disadvantage up to some extent. The advantage part is, well, the laptop is sealed tight. So there's no possibility that dust would enter the main components of the laptop and degrade the quality of the components over time. And also, the second part is it does not produce any sound or noise, so it's completely silent. The disadvantage is, well, the processor could have been clocked a little bit higher if there was a fan, but you would barely notice any difference. But you aren't buying this thing to just show it off, right? So let's talk about its specifications. Starting with the display, I just have one word for it. It's gorgeous. The colors, contrast, details, they are unmatched. Once you start using it, there's literally no going back. Because other displays just start looking cheap. You can actually do pretty much everything on this. Editing, color grading, watching movies. And the colors are so lively and beautiful. One catch though, this screen is actually 13.3 inch. If you're used to larger displays, it will pose a significant problem for you. Like programming in Android Studio is such a big pain on this device. Although connectivity options are there, you get two different Thunderbolt ports which you can use for connecting to larger displays but the main catch is you need an USB-C display or you need to buy another cable which is uh, an HDMI to USB-C. Now if you have an USB-C display that's well and good but you also need to have a Thunderbolt cable which supports display so not any normal USB-C cable will do and even the one that comes with uh, in the box with this laptop doesn't support a display connection. I have the Acer uh, USB-C display in the back as you can see the monitor that I use in most of my videos and uh, I can actually connect it with my laptop using the USB-C that is provided in box by that monitor. So many monitors do provide you with the cable that you need for the connection and many monitors don't. So if you're buying one make sure to see it has one. Else you can get a pretty cheap uh, USB-C to HDMI cable which also works just fine. But if you have an iPad like I do one over here. You can actually wirelessly connect the display to the iPad and use it as a separate extended monitor without any additional software. I've actually talked in extensive details about this in the later part where I've explained the Apple ecosystem so make sure to watch that part. One issue with these two ports is well both support charging but if you use one charging then you're just left with one USB-C port which you can use for connecting a pen drive or anything else so it's a little bit of trouble and also you don't have any HDMI port and I'll you don't get actually so if this is your uh, first macbook if you are buying it so make sure to know these problems there's an uh, audio jack over here which you can use for connecting uh, wired headphones uh, actually they are very important for editing if you want to edit using external headphones uh, this part is pretty important because if you use headphones connected through bluetooth there's a significant amount of lag which actually causes a lot of trouble Okay, now it's time to talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. Beginning with the keyboard, you actually don't get a full-sized keyboard on this Mac. Now, it might be okay for most of the people out there, but if you want to use Blender or if you use Blender, you know how important the number keys are. So, that poses a bit of a trouble. So if I want to switch between the different views, like if I want to enter the camera view of the Blender uh, project which I'm uh, using, I can't really do it easily because there is no number pad keys. So that's a problem. It's a very compact laptop, so it's not possible to put the entire keyboard inside this small space. So it is very good for portability, but obviously it also comes with the usual caveats. Now if you talk about the quality of the keyboards, they are just superb. Now it's a subjective matter for the keyboard, how it feels actually but I think Apple pretty much nailed it in the keyboard section and uh, many people actually don't like the Mac keyboard I don't know why because I guess they do a lot of typing work which may lead to fatigue sometimes because they are just very super clicky so this is how it sounds like
The trackpad is also great and the best part is the trackpad is not clickable. Feedback is controlled by an internal haptic motor. So you can change the intensity or the pressure to which the trackpad would react to. So there's low, medium and high. By default, it probably comes with high or medium. I don't really remember. And I switched over to low because I thought I had to click a bit hard in order to do something. So right now it's kept at the low part and it feels more effortless. Okay, now let's talk about the speakers. Notice how Apple has positioned them separated far away from each other. I don't really know if it is about the positioning of the speakers or the quality of the speakers. Whenever I play something, it actually feels like it's playing right over here. It gives that nice surround sound effect. Well, if you talk about the general quality of the speaker, Apple has actually hit the sweet spot. Starting from the bass to the treble, everything sounds crystal clear. It doesn't matter what to use for, you will have a really great experience with the speakers, whether it's watching movies, YouTube videos, or even for editing purposes. And it impresses me even more because of the quality that the speaker packs in such a small space. Okay, now let's talk about the main part, that is performance. If you talk about day-to-day -day daily performance, it shows no lack because the SSD is super fast and it is powered by Apple's homegrown M1 chip and it does everything literally effortlessly. Opening of applications, closing them, switching among different applications and even if you open a ton of tabs and do browsing, it won't stutter a bit. But I'm pretty sure that for a customer buying at this price point would expect something more. And yes, you can do a lot of editing on this. I primarily use DaVinci Resolve and it works super smooth. I actually use it for 4K editing and it handles everything quite effortlessly although I'd notice sometimes it causes some trouble which is expected but yeah for the most part it works fine I was actually talking to my friend who owns a MacBook Pro 2020 which is definitely the higher version of the MacBook Air and I found him complaining about one thing which is blender so if you're doing 3d modeling and more you should not go for this laptop it doesn't perform really well and I also tested it out myself on the MacBook Air and it wasn't really a great experience so it's a bit difficult and it's not just in terms of performance but also due to the missing features like the keyboard and more which makes it kind of tough to do work on Blender. Okay now let's talk about the Apple ecosystem. I can't really stress enough or say enough how beautifully Apple has done everything with their ecosystem. There's literally everything you need and it's so seamless. I only have two Apple devices with me that is the iPad and the MacBook Air. Whenever I'm using both of these devices together it just feels like one. I can literally move a file from the iPad to the laptop by dragging and dropping using the mouse because the mouse can literally extend from my laptop to the iPad. It's just crazy how beautiful this feature is. And it's not just about the mouse, you can literally extend the display of the laptop to the iPad or if you want you can mirror the iPad screen to your laptop. And no, you need not have to do anything else for configuring them together because it is literally integrated with the different operating systems. And this ecosystem is so good that it really makes me think why I don't have an iPhone. I use an Android but there's a lot of problems if you want to connect an Android to a uh, Mac. The cables, if you use them, uh, your laptop won't recognize your Android device. You have to install other softwares and access your files from there. Also, Finder does not recognize it, like I mentioned, so you have to browse the files on your phone through another software and the experience isn't good. Although there are third-party apps which have come up with a solution. So there is Snapdrop which has been existing for quite some time. The best option to use as of now is Local Send. You will get it on Play Store, you can install it on your Mac and transfer files among your devices. Doesn't matter if it is Android. Okay, now let's talk about the battery of this laptop. I'll tell you, when I took this out for long trips, there were certain trips when I did not have to charge it. So if you are just going out for two to three days, you need not even carry the power adapter. I quite well remember when I was traveling somewhere and I was having this laptop with me. So I was doing some editing work in the train. I still remember the battery percentage when I started the work was 100% and after a long long time when I completed everything, it was just down by 1%. That is 99%. It just blows my mind how beautifully Apple has optimized everything. And all thanks to the ARM architecture that Apple uses in the M1 chip. It had literally shaken the entire laptop market back in 2020. And still now, there are no other powerful laptop which can compete in terms of battery with the MacBooks released from and after 2020. Okay, now it's time for the final verdict, whether you should buy it or not. 
Now this laptop was released four years back by Apple, so it did receive a number of updates and right now it's running the latest version of macOS that is macOS Sonoma. And according to the normal update expectancy, this laptop will be supported till 2027 with macOS updates. But that's not the end because after 2027, you will still get application updates for quite some time. Now the main advantage of Windows laptops is they do not have any end date for receiving updates. So they will continue to receive updates in Windows. Now you need to make sure it is supported by Windows 11 because I don't really know when the next version of Windows will come out. Microsoft will probably provide you support. Okay, now let's talk about the RAM because at this price point, other companies are providing around 16 GB of RAM. But in this case from Apple, it's actually 8 GBs. Now I have never faced a problem with that. Now Apple stated previously that their 8 GBs of RAM or is equivalent to 16 GBs of RAM on other laptops. I don't really know how true it is, but personally, I never experienced anything that it has low RAM and because of that, I'm not able to use certain applications. Because if you see Apple, they actually do a lot of optimization with the software. So even with limited amount of memory, the laptop handles everything very smoothly. I actually have a Linux device back there and it's a desktop, so uh, with same 8 GBs of RAM. But whenever I do some programming on Android Studio and there are certain uh, Firefox tabs open in the background, the desktop does slow down. If you compare it with this, I have never experienced that with the same 8 GBs of RAM. So yeah, you can definitely not think much about it. Now, who shouldn't buy this? Now, if you are a power user, like you need your laptop for 3D modeling and all, I would say it's not really ideal to buy this. Around 60 to 64,000, if you increase your budget a little bit further, you will get a desktop. Now, I have one in the back. Uh, which is a different desktop. Now I run uh, 3D modeling software and all on that. It doesn't stutter at all. It also handles video editing quite well. The only problem is, well, it won't be portable. So that is there. Now if you get a Windows laptop, or PC at this price point, those gaming PCs, they are like thick laptop and you have to continuously keep them connected to a power source because they drain the battery a lot. So instead of getting a gaming laptop, I think it's much better to get one of these desktops. Although with a gaming laptop, you can still do some work if you're traveling somewhere, but with these, you can't. So that's the only advantage. But for the same price, your desktop will provide much better performance. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.